So uh, it's actually fairly simple. I'm going to show you how I went about this. So we have this layer right here, and <clears throat> it's basically just uh, taken from you know the shape of this window. And this color here is probably just, oops, let's get over there and do our picker. Um, yeah, see that's just pure white. So this is going to be the basically the, the brightest item uh, in the illustration. You know, there may be a little bit of pure white uh, ending up um, somewhere along here. And I'll do another um, tutorial talking about uh, painting metallic surfaces. But I'm thinking about this as being as being the um, the the area of illumination, so the brightest color. And of course, in computer graphics, uh, generally speaking, your brightest color is going to be you know the 255, 255, or just you know zero white. Okay, um, and uh, when I do normal painting, I'm almost never painting with just white or just black. So as I may have mentioned before, I'm always going to have a little bit of color in my shadows and highlights to bring everything together. Never paint a shadow with black or highlight with just white in case it's something like an you know, old highlight in the eyes might be pure white. So anyway, I'm thinking about this as the brightest area of the, uh, of the painting. So nothing else is going to be that bright. Nothing else will be that you know, pure uh, white. So if I uh, come down here and uh, look at uh, a few things. Um, let's just look at that um, uh, layer four. Okay, so that's that background right there. I just did a, a command click to um, to select that background. What I had here, I'll just redo what I have, what I have with this one, is um, uh, whatever the, the white area is going to be, or the illuminated background area, you wanna paint that and have that on its own separate layer. So I'll click up here. Oops, I guess I should put that way up here like this. There we go. And um, I'll just fill that with a color. There we go, see, very nice. Now it doesn't matter at all what color this is going to be, and I'll show you why. We're gonna remove uh, this out completely with, uh, with the fill. But also, um, because this is not really a real thing, it's a lens effect. It happens within the lens of a camera. So even though it's in the background, here and it's the farthest bit of the uh, um, uh, of the subject I'm painting. It needs to be on top of everything. So here it is, right here on um, on top of of um, this layer, right? So or on top of all the layers here. So uh, no matter what, it goes. Um, it's going to be the highest point in your illustration, the topmost layer above everything else you've done. So the trick here, if anyone has ever wondered. You've got opacity, so I can take the opacity down, right? And then of course you have fill, and you might have to take the fill down, and the fill does the same thing. So you ever, if you ever wondered what's the difference between opacity and fill, why do we have those two different things there? Well, I'll show you. So because this is a very bright white light here, I'm gonna do an outer glow, so double click to do a, a layer style, and pick my outer glow, and this is an area where I would just choose uh, white. So we'll just do screen, that's fine, 100%, and take the size up. So you can see there's that, that glow coming out over the, the edge there, all right? So um, giving it a glow, 131 pixels, how big that glow is is gonna depend on a lot of things. How much of a light bloom you want, and of course also how big your illustration is. And this one's a decent size. You can see it's uh, 2,800 pixels across. So let's just kinda do that right there and say okay. You can see if I take down the opacity, what happens here is that you can see the fill color, of it, which is that red going down, and also the glow is going down as well. So for this technique, what you need is you need to reduce the fill. And this is one of the main reasons that fill is here. There are a couple other things you can do with it, but this is one of the primary reasons, is if I take the fill down to zero, you can see that it removes everything that's there, um, the pixels on that layer, but it leaves, it leaves the glow, or any effect you have. Bevel and emboss, um, pattern overlay, gradient overlay, you know, inner shadow, um, outer shadow, whatever, it leaves that. So that's the whole trick there, is to take the fill down to zero, and you're keeping the opacity normal. All right, so this is you know, kind of the, the one important bit right there, and, and you can see that of course it kind of looks like it gives this, this, this plain flat white here some sense of illumination, like that light is, is bleeding over right there, 
uh, bleeding over that edge. But we need to kind of have it uh, be wrapping around all this stuff right here, you know, the arm and the hair. So what I would do there is I would actually, you can see I've added a mask. So I'll add a mask to this layer, there you go. And then we're just gonna come here and I'm going to load a selection from all these various layers that I've used to add to and create something, you know, the, the part of the mask I want. And what I wanna do is I wanna block this out here so that the, um, this layer style, in this case it's the uh, outer glow, actually continues along here, all these new areas or this contour that I've painted. So I would come down here and start working at this. Um, let's see, B2, that would be from the black. Oh, okay, not using that. So I'm just gonna come here and find various layers that I've used. And if you, if you don't wanna have to hunt, hunt through them, you can just right click with your move tool and then um, come down here and uh, you know, it'll show you whatever layers are right where you clicked. So there is a color of the arm, with the base color, so new 504. So I'm gonna command click right there where you see the, the little icon, and it loads a selection from that layer. And of course, if you're doing this on a PC, it's a control click, but that's what you're doing right there. See, as I, as I hold down that key, you see a little um, marquee for a selection going around your cursor. So I'm, I'm command clicking there to load that. Now, of course, I need selections from all these areas, and I can uh, load various uh, ones at once. So I'm gonna need uh, the stuff here for the hand and the armor. So uh, let me just kind of right click right here. Um, let's see, layer five, what's that? Oh, let's see, let's go down to here, that, that uh, 5825. I'm gonna now shift command click to add to the selection. Notice I have the little selection marquee plus a, a plus sign. Click. Great, now it's added that right there to it. So pretty good stuff. And I just need to keep going on to where I get all these little bits added here. So I need the stuff here for the, the leather right there around the, around the hands. Oh look, there I have one there, B3 glove. And of course B3, that is a, um, uh, that's a PMS color. So once again, Command Shift click. And I've added that area right there. I've got a little bit right here. Um, what's that, is there a B2? Command shift click, great. I've added that little bit right there. And so now I need the sword. So right click over here. Oh look, I've got a, a sword layer. Oh, that's not a layer actually, it is a, um, a layer group. So I can come down here, I'm looking for the bottom most one that it's using. I'm using as a clipping mask and there it says sword hilt. I'm gonna uh, shift command click that. Great, so I've added that in there. And then you see the blade, I need that one. Where's my sword blade? This one of course tells me that's actually a vector shape layer, but same difference, I can command click it and make a selection from it. So command, shift click. Great, and so I've got all that added, good stuff. And now I just need this hair right here. So I'll close up that. The hair should be pretty much close to the top. So if I right click up here, I can sort of look at some of the stuff right here. There's my B6 hair. And this actually is why it's really helpful to label your layers. So command, shift click here, I've got that. Okay, I should be it, and I see if I have anything else here. I'm just going to kind of zoom in and uh, take a look at items there. Looks like I might need a little bit more uh, going on right there, but uh, you know I can even uh, keep doing this if I'm not quite done. So I'm going to come here to my layer and click on the layer mask. Make sure that's active. I don't want to add things here. Of course, I want to add it right here, and I can see that my uh, foreground color is black. So I'll just use a nifty keyboard shortcut and I'll fill with black. Okay, great, good stuff right there. And I can even option click on that um, layer and I can take a look and see what's on the mask. I can see it looks like I'm missing some little pieces right here. See, I've got some extra sort of stray hairs that I put in there. So let's see, uh, it might be this one here. Here's an important thing. Since I've already filled this uh, mask and I've got, um, uh, I, I've, I've got the selection active, I don't want to fill again with the same selection active because what that'll do is it'll actually add a bit more to the edge here, right? It'll add a bit more to that edge and it'll make it heavier than it needs to be. You don't want to use this technique and fill more than once. So I don't want to refill with this already selected. So I'm going to come down to this hairs layer. I think that's one where I, yep, that's where I painted just a few extra stray hairs. And this time I'm going to command click and not command shift click because I don't want to 
add to the selection. I just kind of want to get its own selection right there. Great. And so then I will uh, come back to this mask. I could even alt click on it and then fill just to kind of see that go in there. There we go. And that's what I want that mask to look like. So that's going to chop out uh, the area there of, um, of uh, the figure in front of the light. Okay, so that's about it. And what I have here does look, uh, you know, kind of, kind of uh, excessive, right? Looks a little bit, a um, little bit excessive. So I'd come here and double click my outer glow and probably take that size down to where it's working you know, a little bit better. In this case, a much smaller size just kind of wraps around there nicely and it gives just this hint of this really nice illuminated, illuminated uh, background and just kind of wrapping over there. Maybe that's a bit too much. You know, I could take the uh, the opacity down of that um, of that um, outer glow, but just you know, kind of whatever is working for you. So this here actually to me looks pretty good, and you can also try some different blend modes depending upon what we're doing. And now one thing I want to keep keep in mind here is of course these the section here these are going to be your brightening blend modes, and screen color dodge and linear dodge are probably the three most useful ones. The one problem with color dodge is that it won't really appear over black. And these things here, which are getting almost black with a really dark hair, color dodge is not going to appear over these really dark areas. So it's not quite a good choice uh, for that. I often use color dodge for intense illumination, but that would be the light source itself, not any glow coming off of that. It's also looking a bit too bright right along here, uh, too much intense color. And then there's kind of linear dodge, which is going to be similar to, to screen, but just stronger. But when I'm using something like white, it's really going to kind of look the same. So in this case, screen is, is a decent choice. Overall, it gives a really nice look here. Just a little hint of, um, little hint there of that light wrap going around. Just kind of a fun little technique. And it's, it's great to look for places that you can, you can add that in and just uh, gives you, your images that nice touch. It can be used with, um, you know, photographic types of things. When you're wanting to composite in, say, a, a, a light um, illuminated background or a sky or something, it can be used in purely painted stuff like this. Let's just kind of take a look and see what I did originally on this one. I'll double click on that. And, okay, so I did a linear dodge here, and I also used a little hint of green color. Ah, interesting. So it just gives a little hint of color along there. So you see that kind of green interacting with that, whereas here's the white one, and so it looks more of a, a pure white. So I guess the reason I did that is in this original photo, there's a lot of this sort of green gray happening, and you see a lot of green happening in the shadows. So I kind of broke my own rule and made a, a highlight or something out of white. Well, what I originally did, I'm sure was this um, 5595. I used these greens here as like shadow color and a highlight color. Um, in this uh, illustration because the original photo had that sort of look and I wanted to give some interesting color to the um, to the the highlight and shadows there so um, something like that you know would be just fine but it gives you a sort of a good example of the um, of uh, how you can experiment with this in this case the size was pretty large but I took the opacity way down and so it didn't kind of uh, over uh, overdo things here um, and I could try the same thing with this new one I just added. Again, double click on that. So instead of, uh, you know, white, um, you know, there we go. There's that same color. And so if, if I go from screen to linear dodge, again, notice I didn't use color dodge because of all the dark colors here. And also, um, you want your light wrap to be kind of soft. And uh, often the color dodge is just too bright and intense to be soft. So there's my linear dodge right there. And it looked a bit too much at 100% or even a higher percent. So you see, I took it down to 50. But just kind of great the way you can, you can sort of adjust and fine tune this to where you get just the level and intensity of light wrap that you want. Just a, a fun little thing that you can do to add to your illustrations. It's very easy, but just requires, um, well, I'll cancel that. We'll see kind of the original one there. It requires a knowledge of how to use fill and um, layer styles with masks. And uh, that should do it. Hope you enjoyed it.